Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I want to share with you some things that I wouldn't do if I was looking for a job. A question came up recently in one of my one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions about if you were in a job search yourself, what wouldn't you do? And I thought that was an interesting take on the topic, so in this video I'm going to give you some insight into how I approach my own job search and some of those things that I would avoid if I were you. Now, before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more videos just like this one directly from a corporate recruiter, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You might also wanna hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any future posts. And if you want more of my pretty face, I'm on TikTok and I also have a LinkedIn profile that you should check out. I'll leave the links below. Okay, so let's assume that I'm unemployed and I'm beginning my job search starting today. These are the things that I wouldn't do if I was you in your job search. So what I wouldn't do is update my old resume. I wouldn't pull my old Word doc file that's sitting on some thumb drive somewhere that I haven't used in a few years, dust it off and start adding to it. And I guess that there's a lot of you out there watching this who are probably doing this yourself. You take your old resume, and as you need it, you probably go and you update a few lines. You maybe add your most recent employer. You maybe tweak a couple of things here and there. What ends up happening is you end up with a, what I call a Frankenstein-like resume. I'm willing to bet your old Frankenstein resume is not optimized to give you the best chance of success. So for me, when I was looking for my job the last time, I actually took my old resume. I started working on it and I'm like, you know what, this is garbage. I'm just gonna start over again. I kind of ripped it all up. Then I went through a few iterations and then I remembered I'm a recruiter, I should have a very good insight into what grabbed my attention. So I created a resume template with that exact thing in mind. I started to put in all the best practices for things that I would look for as the recruiter, and I developed what eventually became the outline for Resume Rockfield. If your resume is, I'd say, more than a year old, it's probably not worth even trying to go back and update it. I would just rip it up, start over again, and have a fresh document that's nice, clean, and concise. Now that leads me into the second thing is somebody saying, well, what if I just hired a resume writer to write my resume? Be sure they know what they're doing. They can put together a great document for me. I've had success in the past, et cetera, et cetera. And by all means, if you feel like you need a resume writer to get you up to current state with a working document, then go hire one, but know that there's a pretty big investment in it because a good resume writer is gonna understand the hiring process. In fact, if I was looking for a resume writer, one of the major litmus tests that I would use in determining who I would use is somebody that actively hired people in their career, whether it's an HR person, a, a recruiter, or somebody that was really involved in the hiring process. Because if you're getting resume advice from somebody that's never been involved in the hiring process, it's like going to a mechanic to get your yearly health physical. But my advice on this one is, I would not use a resume writer myself. And people say, well, wait a minute, don't you write resumes yourself? Isn't that one of the services that you offer? It actually is. I write limited amounts of resumes each month. But the reason why I say don't use a resume writer is one of the most important things you can be doing in your job search is customizing your resume for the roles that you're gonna be applying to to give yourself a better chance at getting notice for that first round interview. And that's what Resume Rocket Fuel is all about. That's why I created the course because I can catch the fish for you, but it's better for you to learn how to fish yourself because realistically speaking, you're not gonna hire a resume writer for each role that you're applying to. They might give you a nice generic document but it's likely not gonna be a perfect fit for a lot of the roles that you're gonna be applying to. It might only be for one kind of generic profile because that's just the nature of resume writing. They can't possibly give you a resume that's gonna be a great fit for every position to be applying to because I would rather acquire this skill that's gonna directly impact my earning potential going forward. It's a no-brainer when you look at the cost to benefit ratio. And the next thing is gonna be kind of a surprise to a lot of people is that I wouldn't even really put a lot of emphasis or bother with my existing networks. Because generally speaking, when you are looking for a job immediately, you're actually in an active job search, the chances of somebody in your active network, in other words, the people that you currently know today that you've worked with in the past, et cetera, having an active job that you would qualify for and be a good fit for at that moment that you need it, in other words, you're, you're unemployed right now, you're looking for a job, I've found to be very slim. It's just not a good likelihood that somebody in your active network is gonna be able to help you. And when I was unemployed, when I got laid off, one of the things that I did was I reached out to everybody that I knew in my active networks, people that I used to work with very closely. I asked them all the same question. Hey, I just got laid off. I'm looking for a new opportunity. If you know of anything, if you keep me in mind, I sure would appreciate it. And people that I was absolutely the closest to in my working world, it was like crickets. I didn't hear a single thing. It was kind of like a, yeah, sorry to hear that, but didn't get any traction at all. And I kind of dawned on me that 
you can't rely on people that you actively know today, like physically or personally know, maybe you worked with them directly. They're just not a good source of leads. And I'll say in the long term, they can be very powerful tools for you, especially if you're looking to move up in an organization, because those are the people that will typically pull you along with them as they move up in their career, especially if you're really tight with them. And that's where we want to start to expand our networking to people that we don't currently know, but might have a job. Keeping with the spirit of social media, the next thing that I wouldn't do is compare myself to everybody else on the platform, because it can be very hard on your mental health to see everybody else around you seemingly having success when you're not having any. You have to remember that each person's employment journey is unique to them, and you have to kind of compartmentalize and mentally shut off all the announcements of people having that success. Yours will come to just keep at it. Okay, so now I've got a resume and I've got my networks built. The next thing that I would not be doing is using the shotgun approach in my job search. Everybody who's watching this video has done this at some point where you spray and pray. You're basically applying to as many relevant job titles as you can. And generally speaking, you just bog yourself down with a bunch of garbage. You could potentially find yourself interviewing for a company that doesn't help move your career forward in the right direction, could be potentially low pay, low quality, and could stunt your growth. It actually could hurt you by pigeonholing you into a certain line of work that you're not really interested in, all in the sign of desperation. So I implore you, don't spray and pray. We want to know exactly the kind of roles that we want to apply to so that we have the best chance of getting the right opportunities at the right compensation levels for us. If you're fortunate enough to get that interview for a job that you really like, I absolutely would not recommend that you just wing it. Do not go into that interview without any level of prep and more importantly, interview strategy. Because if you just walk in and try to wing it, the chances of you being successful in that interview are gonna be very slim. There are some people who are naturals at interviewing, but for most of us, we need a very tight interview strategy. So we give ourselves the best chance of landing that dream offer at the highest compensation level possible. And finally, the last major thing that I would not do in my job search is keep doing the same thing over and over and over again if it wasn't working. We wanna plan, do, check, and adjust. And if we're not having success with the current strategy that we've implemented, it's time to reevaluate and try something different. Adjust how you're approaching your resume game, look at how you're networking, look at where in the interviewing process you seem to be falling out at and try to identify what potential opportunities for improvement you might have. So those are the types of things that you wanna be doing to adjust your strategy going forward. Otherwise, you're just gonna to continue to experience the same level of frustration over and over again. If you're somebody that needs more help, that's actually something that I specialize in and I've got a website. It's called lifeafterlayoff.com. It's loaded with tips and tricks all from an insider's perspective. I've got years of experience recruiting and hiring from both a recruiter's perspective and a hiring manager's perspective. So I've got both sides. I've got some of my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. I spoke about resume rocket fuel already. And if you're somebody that's looking to get more in depth on your LinkedIn game, and it actually could work for inch two, it's called unlocking LinkedIn. And it's going to teach you how to get around the recruiter altogether, go right into the interviewing process and hopefully get to that end result, which is the offer. But if you need more help on that portion of it, the interviewing, there's a course called the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp that I would highly encourage you to check out. And it's going to break down each step of that interviewing process and ultimately help you get to that offer and negotiate the best terms for you. And if you're somebody that needs more specific help, especially breaking down where it is in the interviewing process that you seem to be struggling, sometimes some personal attention can help. And I do offer some private one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You can reach me at my website for those. So, so go over there and check it out and hopefully we can get you to the finish line. Hey, I know this is a lot of information. Hopefully this was helpful for you in your job search. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.